Come on, let's go. Oh. Come on, let's go. Let's go, chat. Come on. Oh, that's a really big pot, chat. You've ruined this for me. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy that just happened. So I was being a little dramatic. Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another stream here on the Pokestables channel. Thanks so much for joining me on this beautiful Sunday. Not like any other Sunday, one of the biggest Sundays of the year, for sure. Party Poker Millions is on, and we have the 3200 main event going on today. So we're playing a 3K today. Mm. What to do with the King Queen against the Under the Gun Open from Didier? King Queen offsuit. Mm. It's close. I thought about doing all three pre flop, three bet and calling and folding. Yeah, that's three bet. I'm just not sure which I like doing, to be honest. So I'm pretty confident I'll mix in doing all three in this spot. <laughs> I think. Uh, 10, 7, 4, two hearts to the flop. I think we're going to bet 75k, maybe something like that. The top end of our range is pretty clear, I think, right? Which is one on a value bet with these jacks three aces sort of hands. We do have like ace king and ace queen and king queen and queen jack suited and these sort of hands that like checking a bit. Yeah, I think we just bet though. I think we just bet. Keep it straightforward with this hand especially, which is not one that is going to be a lot of fun when we check back and then the turn comes a four and they bet. Like, are we going to mess around with them here? Are they going to float? Are we going to float? Or turn comes a heart and they bet. Are we going to call? Are we going to raise? Like, it just gets a little weird. Uh, raise ace nine suited. I like a bigger bet with this hand actually. At this deck depth, with this hand, top top, like the big bet size. Pocket fours. Jerry O'Dean raises. We're going to call on the small blind. We're going to hit a four. Not today, Dottie. Not today. 10 5 5 in the flop. Interesting. Check, check. Going to block. I'm just, like, I think this is a good play with this hand. I'm just thinking about, like, do I, can I actually block an appropriate bluffing range? Because we're targeting ace high. This block for value, right? Call on the flop. Our actual hand wants to raise, but I don't really want to raise fold at these stacked up. So we just call and then turn is painful. I don't know what to do. Metric is my number one Canadian band. Interesting. We even know a Canadian band. Nickelback, that's a Canadian band as well. He even loves Nickelback. It's a shame to admit it. The thing is, like, my hometown, my home province was like, it's the target demo for Nickelback, you know? So I actually kind of rebel against that often. But I don't see the point of being a pure Nickelback hater. Like, there's nothing wrong with those guys. They... They make a brand of music, but I think they got the short end of the stick quite a bit. The, we call again here um, with the nines. I think it's a good bluff catching hand. And then if they jam the river, then we just fold, I think. I think fold. It's The the problem with this is like what pers what part of our range can call the river? We have eights. We have sixes. We have threes. Probably ace queen back to our flush draw. King queen back to our flush draw. What else really can we call with? It's not a lot. It's not a lot of stuff. That we can call the triple barrel with, but the ranges are pretty condensed anyways. Three bet out of the big blind, bet pajam. I think fold is standard and fine. Especially when the backdoor flush draw comes in too. Because that's when they have spades, they're gonna keep barreling on that card often. Alright, we're gonna pot uh before break here. Seven, seven, eight. Checking. Good turn for their range, but we are sort of a little deceptive here. We have quite a strong hand relative to what they think our hand is gonna be when we check back. Like it's one of the better hands that we check back here. So that's cool. They bet half pot. We call. There's better runouts for sure. I think we have to call because of our flop check, but it's a bluff catcher. We block the straight. We don't block diamonds. I think we have to call though. Come on, let's go. Jerry O'Dean goes to the open under the gun. 51-5. First impression is to three bets here. See check off suit. It's an okay hand, but it's not a great hand. A check off suit when you're thinking about what sort of hands raise in this position. So I think I'm going to three bet here. Make it 150. And force Jerry with their bad hands to to put up, you know, to win this pot. We do win it. We win the pot, which is great. This flat makes it a little interesting in that this can be sort of nutted, but let's see what happens. Okay, king six four one diamonds, fine. I mean, pretty reasonable flop for ace four, right? We have a pair and a backdoor flush draw. Check again. Let's go, dude. So nice to get the show down there. Now, this is a little bit of a different scenario. You know, we're 40 blinds deep, but we're not anywhere close to the money bubble with this fives. I think we get to raise this one. 
Uh, not nearly as many shove stacks on us in this spot. So the fives and the 3200, I like it. But the Peterson raises, we're kind of close again here, honestly, but I think it's good enough. I think it's close enough. Oh, okay. And I think we bet 60% here. Sounds good to me. Okay, take it. Raise it up here with this 10-9 suited. And we get a call. Queen, seven, three on the flop with two hearts. We are going to bet three bet this board. I expect to get check raised often on this flop, quite often. They should not raise here. This is not a thing. Call. Uh, King, queen's pretty... Pretty decent hand. So we call and see a flop here, I think. Very annoying flop. So we have queen jack without a spade. We have king queen without a spade. King jack without a spade. We have king queen is right on the edge. I'm going to fold. It's it's so close that like king queen with the king of spades might be in there. It's just right on the edge. Like the price is incredible. This is really annoying, dude, with a shack suited. Yeah, we'll just fold. I don't think the sizing helps us in that spot. The sizing they choose, I don't think that helps us in such a close spot in terms of like, can we make a read either way? We're on the line here. Like we're all in with ace queen already. We've already folded ace 10. Like what do we want to do? It's a vulnerable sizing as in they're showing vulnerability making that size, which is strong broadly. I mean, it's, it's a weak read, but you know, something. I think limp call a seven is good. I don't like raise jamming so much or raise calling. Seems like a better limp call hand, a7. Okay, streets, streets, streets. King 10, six. We should see probably a larger bet here, just given the texture. A lot of gutters, draws, tons, you know? I think it's a check fold here. Average gamer, I've been engaged to 10 years with my fiance. We're good at how things are. We'll get married one day. Yeah, man, it'll happen one day. I think check raise here. You're a cool man. She would never leave an awesome person like you. You're super genuine. Thanks, man. That's very kind of you. Can only be myself, you know? So I'm glad it's something that you dig and it's glad it's something she can dig, but I don't know. Relationship, it's, you can just, you can only be you. Oh my God. Holy smokes. Thomas didn't think we would check the ace. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. That just happened. Thomas thinking we wouldn't check the ace. We'd always bet the ace in the river. So went for the overbet jam for heaps and uh, we got it. Check, 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 jam for 5x pot. Let's go. The jack 10 suited. We raise, take it. Right on the edge with jack 10 offsuit. We're going to raise it up in the hijack. We have a straight. Straights are good. In our 3200. Okay, we still have a straight. We do not have a flush. Flush would be better, but you know. Okay, take it down. Good stuff. On tough spot here, eight blinds. Two players behind, though, is the main problem with this. Against fours. Oh, good. <laughs> Seven! No, it doesn't even count. Seven is still the four plays. So sick. Not a lot to think about here, chat. Ace King suited. Very good hand in the main event. This is our moment. Good luck. Is it our time against Christian? We need an ace or some spades. Oh, it's an ace. Hold. Clean. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. One out. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, chat. Fold. Marcus Prince just won like 1.2 million a week ago. So probably playing at a high level. But, you know, it's interesting after you win a big amount like that. I've never won anywhere close to that amount. Uh, even one tenth of that amount. I don't think of one. Um, biggest score is 105k. We defend against Johannes and start with a check. Pretty decent flop for five six, right? We have a gutter to the nuts here. Check. Jack is not a great turn. We need to hope for check check here, and then we can bluff the river, and we just lose money against a jack basically uh, when that happens. But they go for the pot barrel and we fold. A6, we limp. They check. Flop comes jack seven, three all clubs. We check all. Queen of clubs on the turn. I think we bet with the nuts here. 
think if we had the king of clubs, we can be sneaky with the check. But uh, I don't think with the ace of clubs. I just think we should start betting twice. Uh, Prince in there for seven blinds. Okay, good luck. Flipping. Oh, no. No. Come on. Prince just won 1.2 million, bro. Give me that flip. Give me that flip. It's the edge. And I'm going to raise. I like it on the edge because these players moved in, so it looks like there's more players at the table than there actually is, which gets me a little bit more credit. And also, I won the last hand, which probably is going to give me a little bit more credit as well because I take the pressure off of needing to win pots because I just won one. So those two factors tick it into the raise category for me. Just tiny little things, man, but it's the truth. That is the truth. That made the decision for me. We have a call against Tommy as well. Jams for 12 and a half blinds here, closing the action. Hold. Hold. Come on. Oh, that's a really big pot, chat. That's two stacks. Check back is fine, but call a raise as well if it comes in. Don't think there's a... T well, the nice thing about raising fours here is that we do get them to fold hands that are flipping, actually. And we can call limp re-raise. So let me put in a small raise here. King 10-7 on the flop. I think we benefit from, from betting here. We can get owned by getting check raised, but here's the thing, right? Like, let's say our opponent has like jack six or something, you know? They have ace three, something like that. Um, it's really nice to try and end the hand against those hands. I'm gonna call ace on the turn. Now the question is, we clearly can't value bet. We're on the lower half of a range. Can we bluff fours, right? Do we have better bluff candidates? We're gonna have hands like nine, six off. We're gonna have hands like eight, six off. I have hands like queen three and queen deuce and jack three and jack deuce, jack four, jack five. That's a lot of hands that can bluff in this spot. We have a lot of value bets too, but fours is not the right choice of bluff cards because of all those cards I just mentioned are better than that to bluff. So I think we check check and this hand is probably just dust now. Unless our opponent misses a bluff with like nine eight or jack eight or jack nine or queen x back to flush draw, something like that. But... We should just lose this pot, unfortunately. Oh, It's kind of close with fives, to be honest, but I think it's a fine open. We're deep enough here. Previn calls. Horacio Augustin Rivera Posse. Squeezes. Dang it! You've ruined this for me. Johannes raises. Previn calls. 9-7. I think is a fold offsuit in a multi-way pot. 9-8 is definitely a call. 8-7 is definitely a call. 9-6 is definitely a fold. 9-7, I feel like you can get away with both. I feel like it's fine against these two, though. Good opponents. We're going to get a little bit less money out of our opponents in this difficult tournament. Uh, King-5, Alexandros in the big blind. Uh, I'm going to raise fold, I think. I'm trying to think. I don't like limp call. I don't think I like limp jam. Oof. Um, so I think raise is going to be a better approach here. Jack 7-7. Seven, seven. And I think I'm going to go for a small bet. We do check often, but this is one of the hands that doesn't seem like a great hand to check in that we don't have a lot of great potential going forward. Unless we, of course, hit a king. I think small bet again. I don't want to give free cards to a lot of gutters and flush draws and stuff like that. So I think we just keep betting. Very likely to have the best hand right now. So I think we bet and then check river and don't plan to fold. I mean, a really bad card would be like like the 10 of spades or something like that, you know, which completes like kind of everything. But then the, the tough thing about this hand is that our ranges are super wide, both of us, right? We've both got a ton of junk. Uh, we would call with this hand. Now, we are seven off the money. I think in a pure chip EV world, we're going to see bet ace king, ace queen, ace jack often. I think we definitely want to lean more towards checking here given our proximity to the money bubble. And also, our hand is like on the edge of wanting to bet in the first place. So I think check check is good. And then decide what to do on the turn. Turn is great. Trips on the board. Pretty hard for them to have a six. Pretty hard for them to have a pair in general. And we still have some over pairs in our range. So uh, I think we bet and then check the river. Nah, I like check better. I check better. We have the nuts, chat. But that's maybe a bad run out in that if they have an ace, we chop. Okay, take it out. That's fine. 
I have been doing work with the one and only Ben CB from Raise Your Edge. And we developed a course where we take one of my tournament runs. We go really in depth into a bunch of topics. We have over 10 hours of footage. I ask him the questions that I think are going to provide the most value, which is why I think I'm the best student that could possibly be in this series. You know, it's just so jam packed with value. It's just great. Thanks for checking out the course. We are on the bubble here, chat. It is double bubble time in both the main events, 3,200 and 320. 23 pay, 27 left. Min cash is going to be anywhere from 5 to 7K. Uh, Jessica checks. I think I want to check here with sevens as well. And let's see a turn. So nine, okay? So we have an open ender. It's another overcard potentially that could beat us. But 10 or a five gives us a very strong hand. And it's not like an ace or a king, which is a little bit more concerning, I'd say. So hopefully it goes check, check here. But if we see a bet, we probably get the call and go to the river. Question is, do we want to bet here? I mean, we could bet and like fold out ace X and king X sort of hands, but it's probably not enough upside. I think it's a check check again. River is good, I would say. Lose to jacks, lose to tens. Lose to a hand like queen jack or queen 10, which could have checked twice here. We're racking up some combos. Lose to a hand like ace eight suited. That's a big bet. Um, do they have a hand like nine ten suited? possible. Do they have a hand like Jack-9 suited? We've listed quite a few combos, right? And I do think they can check this Queen-X out of position with the bubble and all of that. You got to think about our range on the spot as well, which is like, what percent of, of our range is left here on the river when it's checked to the river? Mm, we don't even have pure Ace-8 suited. I think we probably have to call. It seems really close to me, but when I'm thinking about the sort of hands that we can call on the spot, Sevens is one of the best ones we're going to have here. And they can have some Queen-X sort of hands, but they also have a lot of hands that have missed too. Uh, yeah, I don't know. 9 10 suited would suck, and Jack 9 suited if they have it would suck. Probably C bet Jack 9. Okay, I'm gonna call. I think it's a call. It's close. I think it's a call. King Queen. Uh, flop top pair, top kicker. Great flop. Now, this is gonna get spicy interesting. We could totally bubble with this hand because this is a very strong flop, and the stack depth is fun. What sort of hands are we worried about? Like, what are the bad scenarios we could run into here? Well, Sets of eights and sets of fives. That's really it from Jessica. Johannes, jacks, queens, kings, aces is in this range and could have the sets as well of tens, eights, fives, okay? Pretty small ranges from both opponents that are beating us here. We see an eight on the turn. This is our card. We are the person in this pot that has the most eights of both of our opponents. We get to bet this card for value even though we don't have an eight. We get to say we have an eight and then we get to bet it as a bluff as well when we have spade draws and straight draws and stuff like that. So we're gonna bet 480 here. Action back on Jessica. Take it down. Okay. And we got queens. Now, this is a really gangster spot. Why? I think I like the slow play here. It's such a good squeeze spot for Johannes. We definitely want to reduce our get it all in. I don't want to three bet they jam. We call queens against ace king kind of thing. I would love to call here, induce a squeeze and back raise. And then also we can do okay post flop. We can maneuver post flop. I think this is a sneaky spot to induce. And it's not the end of the world on some flops and some runouts to keep the spot small. It's not the end of the world. For example, here is fine. It's obviously not what we want. We want to squeeze here, they jam, we call, or squeeze, they fold, we jam, or whatever, or they call and the flop comes queen seven deuce, or they call and the flop comes, you know, uh, six five deuce, or something like that. They better have pot, I think we fold, just straight fold it, man. I mean, part of me just wants to straight fold here, uh, two off the money bubble, but King Queen's pretty good. What's our likelihood of getting squeezed? Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, I think we can peel. Like, they're not going to want to squeeze that much because Prebin actually covers them. You know? And now he folds. Great. This is how we bubble, chat. This is how we bubble the 3200 main. This is it, dude. There's just no way we don't bubble here. There's no way. Queen's on the bubble. Of course it's a bubble, dude. It, has anyone ever seen us not bubble in this spot? I haven't. We're not going to bubble here because we have Michael covered. So I was being a little dramatic. Folds. Thing is, if it folds to us, we should open with these two really short stacks. But Gabriel should open or someone, and you know, it's fine. Uh, I'm assuming we have just broke the bubble. Let's go, B cart. We cashed. We've cashed the 3200 B car. 
Alright, King 3 in the big blind. Not a very good hand. Simon Matson raises. Uh, I don't think I have a nice table draw, no. But I, I don't think there is very many nice table draws, you know? It takes a lot of... I think you've got to have some chops to make this day two. Basically, there's probably a few people that have gotten through, you know, because they ran good. But it's a fairly well-structured 18-minute levels on day one. Ooh, good hands. Nice. So... We raise. If Gabor jams, we have to fold. We bought in directly Burtis, and we made day two. And I have all of my own action as well. So we just bought in, and we, we made it. We raise with the ace-10. Interesting, it gets a jam here from Thomas, what we decide to do. But it gets through Thomas. Folds around to Denis Ramos, who calls. Flop is jack, 7-5, two diamonds. This hand, I think, is a check. The board is... It's okay, but it's not great. And I feel like these middling aces are going to be mostly checks. The shorter the stacks get, the more that we're betting in these situations. Whereas deep stack cash games, we're going to check more. So the preflop aggressor just bets more under short stacks. King on the turn. What are our bluffs here? Probably not this. I think we're going to bluff some of our smaller aces. What do we do with like queen 10 on the flop, queen 9, 10, 9, stuff like that? But we make the nuts on the river. So we're going to raise here. Um, this is also just like a good board for the preflop raiser, I think, as well. So it's a, it's a good board for our range. The interesting part of this hand is, if we have a checking hand, it's that hand on the flop. Do we want to start bluffing with our ace-10 on the turn and put pressure on 7x, 5x, and middling pairs? I decided to go no, assuming that I had enough other hands to bluff with our value bets, our, you know, our He's king and our king queen and, and our king 10 that checks back and, and that sort of stuff. But I think you could bluff the turn as well. And then the river is pretty straightforward, I think. Not a very good hand. Not a very playable hand in this situation. We only get to play it against the small blind and not in every scenario. But it falls to the small blind. So it depends how they play this. They limp, we raise. It's a good raise bluff hand here, I think. Take it down. Full jack deuce. Couple chips at a time. Let's make the final table, baby. Let's go, Billix TV. That's exactly, man. One hand at a time, one moment at a time. We're gonna need a few, few cards coming our way, you know. Uh, three nine suit. I'm gonna fold here. It's on the edge, basically. King ten. It's close to an open here, but I think fold is right. Ooh, we have a very nice hand. Ace ten suited. At this point, we're gonna be all in against a single razor, right? If Dennis Ramos raises, we rejam. If Gab, ooh. Against Denny's Ramos is actually close. Against Gabber, we jam. Against Johannes, we jam. Against Denny's is actually kind of close here. But at this point, it's an all-in. Unless it goes shove call, then we could fold. Okay. Johannes. Johannes? Johannes? I don't know how to say it, man. All-in. Good luck. Take it down. Beautiful stuff. A7 is not the one. Fold to us on the button. We raise here. We want to induce... A three bet, we want to induce a regem. We just want action with this hand. We raise it up, folds to ape styles of the big blind. Call. Good luck. Sucks it has to be against ape styles, but it's gotta be. It's just a great hand. We're flipping for seven million chips. We get it done. Come on, chat, let's go. It's sad it's against ape styles, but it's happy that we have seven million chips in this tournament. That's huge. Absolutely huge. And we pick up another monster here. Another monster. Very awkward against this stack. Well, it's an interest, it's a very interesting line. Pablo three bets. This is now a fold with the ace queen offsuit. A lot of pretty short stacks behind us, right? 27, 27, 8, 18, and 24. Folds to the big blind. Who calls? Ace king 10 on the board. This is a bet. Our actual hand kind of wants to check, but you think about the sort of hands that raise in this position as opposed to this, the hands that call. We have so many of these strong hands. They have so many junk hands. So I think we need to bet our range here. Even though I don't really want to bet ace-deuce, I feel like I kind of have to on this board. Just too much strong stuff, dude. Take it down. Let's go. Open from Pablo, we call. If it fools us, we open. Then we just decide against every opponent. Uh, as to how we do things, but we do get a raise to 320, and we are going to call in position. This hand isn't actually that complicated to play, right? If we get a squeeze and a call, 
then we fold. Squeeze in a fold, we call. I mean, it's not great against Nikki. It's not great against Jonathan. Against any of these stacks, it's just fine. I guess things are pretty complicated against Diego, depending on what sizing they would make it. Yeah, I think it's straightforward, though. They squeeze, they call, we just fold with the 10s. They fold, we call. And that's that. There's not a ton to think about here, I don't think. It's somewhat close against Pablo as to whether we can set mine, but I don't think we can depend on our implied odds post-flop, right? A little bit of reverse implied odds when it's set over set. I think it's a fold. Pablo B takes it down. Rodrigo is out. Down to 81 players. Asus in the big blind, we defend against Diego. Streets, queen, eight, deuce, check. I think check raise is the right way to play this uh, board, unless they go for a big sizing, but they go for small sizing. So we're gonna make it uh, 880 here. Sounds, sounds about right. 880, take it down, nice. Pretty good spot to three bet. It's a spot where we are doing fine equity wise against these two as well. And a hand I want to play, but a hand that doesn't play well is a flat. So for all those reasons, I like the three bet against Diego. Both the shorties fold to Jerry O'Dean in the big blind who folds. Action back on Diego. Hopefully Diego has more like the ace five suited and less like the uh, aces. More like the ace five suited. Take it down. We have ace four suited, which is a very fun hand. A very fun hand. Pulls around to Pablo B. Now it's interesting how these stacks set up, right? Uh, against a limp we raise, against a raise, what do we want to do? Because if we make it here, then they have like a jam call or fold situation. So I don't think we really want to do that because them jamming us off our hand is not great with ace four suited, you know? So I think we're going to call here. Against a limp we raise, but against a big raise like this, we just call and take it to the streets. Depends on the sizing. Against very small sizing, we continue, right? If they bet like 450 or here or something, then we call. If they go for like half pot or more, we fold. We have a lot of better candidates to continue with. But they bet 320. This is one fifth of pot. You can fold almost none of your range, like very little of your range here. So we call with the ace high. But obviously things get worse in the turn often. Kind of really need to hope for an ace on the turn. It's a king of clubs. Uh, 700,000 from Pablo B. I think we peel with the 10-6 suited here. Not a great three betting hand being suited. We have a lot of offsuit hands that are better choices. So we call to the streets, ac 5 and we fold. They're probably gonna go for that similar 350K bet size. We need to continue with any spade, with like any queen high or better. 10-6 is outside of that range, so we can just fold. If it was just against ape styles, it would be a regen, but now that it's a raise three bet, our nines is not good enough any longer, so we fold. Uh, I don't like jam with sevens here. I think call is best with this hand. I think Luke is a little bit too deep to want to jam, and then also we're not we're not accomplishing a ton of great stuff by jamming all in against Luke. Really bad flop. Very bad flop. It gets interesting against a check check in that we have one of our best bluffing hands here. But against a bet, I don't see any way for us to continue in this spot. Folds. So what do we want to do against Bruno B here? Do we want to flat or three bet? I think both make some sense. I think we are supposed to three bet a hand this, like this sometimes. So I'm going to go about 50-50 here. Half three bet and half call. Let's mix it up. We're going to call this time. And big miss. Just check folds. Pablo limps, we raise here with the king deuce. It's really easy to underdo raising in this spot, and I think Pablo is going to assume that we underdo it in this spot as well, because almost everyone does. So I think it's a no-brainer raise with the king deuce. There is slightly better candidates than king deuce, you know? Like king high has some showdown value. It's a lot better with queen highs and jack highs and ten highs, but nonetheless, I think it's okay. Uh, wow. Uh, I don't know what to do here with this end. Like pure chip EV, I think a jam is good, but this is the like A7 and A6 are the worst ones. ICM will have some effect in the spot, like a couple ticks, but we're on the couple, we're on the 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 edge. So I'm wondering if we three bet fold this hand. I'm gonna three bet fold here. This is not a play that we really have very much under non ICM, and it's very few specific hands. I'm gonna go for it with this one. This is going to be a raise call with the jacks. Good luck, us. We hit that pay jump, 9,400. 
Run on calls. Jack nine six on the flop. We have top set. Check back here. This is a great slow play opportunity. This is a board that Renan is going to hit fairly often. We're going to check back with a lot of ace-x hands here. And we also have the stacks where we can get this in by the river. I think it's a no-brainer check back with jacks. We wouldn't check back with like jack-10, right? We're going to bet jack-10. But with top set of jacks where we've got the board so smashed, check back. Bit of 470. We just call. But we take a bit of time here. It's interesting how Renan didn't size the turn for a river jam. What does that mean? Why didn't they size the turn to where they could have shoved river? They weren't thinking about it, probably. Which means this is not very good, probably, this hand. I don't think there's anything we can really do. Like, any size we can choose less than all in here, really. I mean, we could we could size down to, like, this or something, but just make it a little weaker. Let's do that. We've got at least 5.5 million, but if they call, it could be about 8. A little bit less than 8. Going on break after this hand, big moments. Still two hands to go in the delay, so they're not going to get there. They fold. Okay, we take it down. Check. Three bet here. 1.3 million. Looks good to me. Luke LaFontaine on the tank. No, Luke, do not have it here. Thank you. Oh, let's go. Ace 10. We're going to raise it up under the gun. The thing that I hate about our stack right now is it's such a good stack to 3-bet, right? We have 27 blinds. They get to 3-bet, and then we have to decide whether we want to risk our 27 blind stack or not. And being so sort of jammed up and short, we don't get to call as much as we would get to call 100 blinds deep. We kind of have the optimal hand to 3-bet against. Now, Ace-10 isn't open, and under ICM, we continue to open these Ace-X hands, right? If we shave our opening range a little bit, we shave it by dropping... 78 suited by dropping 8-9 suited, right? Like those sort of hands we get rid of, but not the ace-x hands. Because they block good hands like ace-king, good hands like ace-queen, and stuff like that. So so we raise it up. We do get three bet from Luke LaFontaine. We're going to fold. Saw your tweet. Let's go. I was so bored. Need something to watch. Let's get it. Ryan Meese, bro. Welcome to the stream. Let's get it done. Ryan. 8-9 suited. I think good enough to open here in the cutoff. I would probably not be opening this under the gun for the same reasons I talked about before with the ace-10 and the 8-9 suited, right? We drop these middling suited hands a bit, but we're in the cutoff, which is a different scenario than being under the gun here. There's only three players to get through, and it is a very playable hand. So we raise, and we take it. That's it. I think raise call with king-jack suited is a good idea. It's a good enough hand. You could limp jam, but it doesn't accomplish much. Raise call at least keeps some of their dominating dominated hands in that are going to jam here like jack 10 like queen jack like king 10 some of these are going to jam so yeah we're going to risk it here good luck chat i'm just going to see if there's any bust outs on any other tables because i'd love to hit a pay jump here it is a 2k pay jump so i'd love to just wait a second and see if there's a bust out on the other table to try and make this 2000 but we are going to call and we got to make sure that we do this without timing out. You've got to balance this increased chance of caching with the chance that your internet disconnects, right? Which is, that's the balance. <laughs> it's a spot where we have an edge, but it's it's not like a massive edge, so it's not the end of the world. What do you guys think? Are we going to win this? We do have a raised three bet on another table, but we don't have a ton of time left. It gets down to 10 seconds, we're going to call. All right, good luck. Flipping. 10 king or jack. GG. Uh, it's too bad.